I want to uh, report to you and relay to you. Uh, there's now uh, another Democrat running. Uh, it looks like it's going to be 30 or so Democrats uh, running for office. It is Julian Castro. Julian Castro, who is running. Uh, he was the former, former HUD secretary. Uh, and Julian Castro strikes me a little bit like the Latino Obama, if you ask me, from 2008. Uh, so let's look, take a look at, at Julian Castro's record. Uh, and here is uh, some of his announcement yesterday. We'll go through it. Y buenos dias. <laughs> First of all, I, uh, I want to say a big thank you to, uh, to my mom. I bet there are a lot of y'all that may have come here to see her instead of me. You know, uh, my mom grew up on this west side of San Antonio and uh, she got involved in politics a long time ago because uh, she wanted to improve her community here on the west side to make sure that folks had basic things like streets and drainage. And so she got active back then in the Young Democrats. And then she ran when she was 23 years old with this slate called the Committee for Body o Betterment. And their slogan was, give government back to the people. Back then, as y'all remember, they didn't have single member districts, so very few women and people of color ever got elected. All of that slate of the Committee for Body O'Betterman lost in April of 1971, but on election night, one of the local reporters asked her how she felt. She felt that she felt good about what they had done and that they'd be back. Well, Mom, I think we're back. You know, so many journeys uh, for me and for my family have started right here. And uh, today we begin another one. In this journey, I am so lucky to have an incredible partner in my wife, Erica. So, so far, so far, have you, he have you heard anything, anything on, on what he's going to do for the country? Have you heard anything on what he's going to do for the country? Nope. Thank you, Notary S999 in the Super Chat. Have you heard anything on, on what he's going to do for the country? Not a thing. We continue. Many of y'all know Karina. And in our little one, Christian. So I want to thank each and every one of you as well for being here today and joining us. What a great crowd we got out here. I also want to take a moment to say thank you to the press who are here. You know, there was a time, there was a time when Joaquin and I thought we were going to go into journalism. And so I know that the press work hard and that they are the friend of the truth in this country. Thank you very much for being here. So this is a special place for all of us, this west side of San Antonio. Yeah. This is the place where my grandmother Victoria came in 1922 when she immigrated from Mexico as a seven-year-old orphan. It's where she grew up. Uh, if you remember Barack Obama's 2007-2008 speech, it always began with his wonderful grandma, wonderful grandma raising him. And all that his grandma did for him where she worked hard for years as a maid, a cook, and a babysitter while raising my mom as a single parent. It's where my mother became an activist, working to improve the quality of life for her own community. It's where my brother, Joaquin, and I were raised by my mom, where we went to school. We were baptized just over there at the Guadalupe Church. We got a great public school education just a few, few blocks away, and I had the honor of serving these neighborhoods as mayor of San Antonio for five years. Yeah. 
Yo, this morning, I rode the number 68 bus yeah. with my brother down Guadalupe Street, like we did so many times when we were kids. Only this time, I brought my daughter Karina with me. That was the same route that we used to take with my mother to get to school. Jesus, we're, we're five and a half minutes in. Are you going to say anything that you're for? Are you going to give one specific policy proposal? For the love of God. Or to go to her work during the summer. I want you all to look around this neighborhood. There are no front runners that are born here. But I've always believed that with big dreams and hard work, anything is possible in this country. Anything is possible if you're well-connected, connected to donors, rich. Anything's possible if you're that. This community is a community like so many others across the nation. A community of good people, of humble people. People who go to work early and stay late, oftentimes at more than one job, so they can provide for their family. When they go to bed at night, they say hopeful prayers. They want their children to do well. They want good health. They want the dignity that comes from a good job and the peace of mind that comes from being able to retire on their own terms. This is a community built by immigrants. <laughs> families from Mexico, but also families from Germany and from other countries. It's a community also built by Native Americans. Families who worked to build a future. Folks who came here to serve our country at Fort Sam Houston and Lackland and Randolph Air Force Base. And today, this community represents America's future. Diverse, fast growing, optimistic, a place where people of different backgrounds have come together to create something truly special. You ain't running for San Antonio president. You're running for president of the United States. And seven minutes in, I have not heard one fucking word on policy. And I'm proud to call myself a son of San Antonio. <laughs> you know, six years ago, I had the honor of standing before the Democratic National Convention. I said then that the American dream is not a sprint or even a marathon, but a relay. My story wouldn't be possible without the strong women who came before me and passed me the baton. Because of their hard work, I have the opportunity to stand in front of you today. My family story wouldn't be possible without a country that challenged itself to live up to the promise of America. That was the point of the American dream. It wasn't supposed to be just a dream. America was a place where dreams could become real. But the thing is that right now, the relay isn't working. The relay isn't working. Yeah, a relay is a game. Maybe it's not working because your party, the Democratic Party, is helping extremist conservatives rig the game. Today, we're falling backwards instead of moving forward. And the opportunities that made America the America that we love, those opportunities are reaching fewer and fewer people. Today, we're at risk of dropping that baton. And that's why we're all here this morning, because we're going to make sure that the promise of America is available to everyone in this 21st century. You see, I learned from my mother so many years ago in this community that when we want change, we don't wait for change, we work for it. When my grandmother got here almost 100 years ago, I'm sure that she never could have imagined that just two generations later, one of her grandsons would be serving as a member of the United States Congress, and the other would be standing with you here today to say these words, 
I am a candidate for President of the United States of America. So, uh, yeah, you get the point. You get the point. So, with all utter, with complete respect to Grandma Castro, uh, this is not meant disrespectfully uh, against Miss the Grandma Castro. Of course, all due respect to his, uh, Mama Castro, uh, who he talked about. Are you going to do anything specific? for the American people because I don't really give a damn what your grandma did. And I don't really give a damn about your personal upbringing. I'm sorry, I don't. I care about what are you going to do? And nowhere, nowhere in that speech did Julian Castro call for the need for Medicare for all. Nowhere in that speech did he call for the need for free public college. Nowhere did he talk about climate change. Did you hear him say a word about climate change? Uh, I didn't hear him. I heard him playing identity politics, which the Kamala Harris crowd says, I'm racist if I bring up identity politics. They say identity politics equals civil rights. I, I, I'm sorry, and some of you might not like what I'm about to say, but this man sounds a whole lot like Barack Obama in 2007 and 2008, talking about the need to heal the world, to bring us together to a post-partisan error. Hey, I know, I was hoodwinked by Obama. I'm sure a lot of you were hoodwinked by Obama in 2008. But this is not, this, this, is, this is what we've been getting from the Democratic Party forever and ever and ever. And to tell you the truth, it was a lot easier uh, to find for you and to report on um, Tulsi Gabbard's record because she has a real long record. He was a mayor of San Antonio and the director of the Housing and Urban Development Department. So it's not that much of a record to go on. Um, but he wants to run for president. He was also angling in 2016 to be Hillary Clinton's vice president. His record, it's not... It's bad, but it's it's not as bad as other people who have served in Congress, and you could see who their donors are. His donors are a little bit more muddied because he was the director of housing and urban development, so you don't really get donations uh, from that.